Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. Today we have another brand new product in the Unify Cloud Gateway line, and the new addition is the Enterprise Fortress Gateway, or the EFG for short. The EFG is Ubiquiti's largest cloud gateway yet, with the ability to support 500 plus Unify devices and 5,000 plus clients and 12.5 gigabit per second IPS routing. Other key features to the EFG is license-free real-time inspection with Next AI inspection, which will take a look at setting up on my home computer. It also supports shadow mode with high availability with the automatic failover. The EFG comes in at a very competitive price point of $1,999 USD MSRP and includes 90 days of professional support. If you're looking to purchase an Enterprise Fortress Gateway, I have an affiliate link down in the description below. Now let's take a closer look at the EFG. And this is what the Enterprise Fortress Gateway looks like. On the right hand side, we have our LCM, which is the 1.3 inch, and below it, it's branded Enterprise FG. On the other side, we have our network ports. For network ports, we have two 2.5 gig, we have two 10 gig, and then we have two 25 gig. Port one is our internet in at 2.5 gig, and then we have port five, which could be also a WAN, at 25 gigabit per second. On the back, we have two power supplies, and when you buy the EFG, these both come populated, and they are hot swappable. You could buy another power supply for $119 USD, and I'll show you here how we could take it out. All we need to do is press on the lever on the side, and then we need to pull on the tab. This will easily slide the PSU out, and we could also insert it the same way. Now on the other side of the EFG, we have three different fans, and this is fairly heavy. It's heavier than any of the other consoles, so you'll wanna make sure that you're using some good screws when you're putting it into your network rack. We've now seen what the EFG looks like, the network interfaces and the dual power supplies. It's time to get the initial setup done. And the easiest way to do a setup of a Unify Cloud Gateway is by using the Unify app on either iOS or on Android. Right now I am on my iOS and you can see the Enterprise Fortress Gateway and it's ready to set up. I'm gonna click on set up. We're now in the name your Enterprise Fortress Gateway and I'm just gonna call it Mac Telecom EFG. Once we've input the name, all we need to do is press next. If you had a previous backup, you could load it into the EFG by restoring from backup. The last step in the initial wizard is just to check for some updates. I already did update this EFG before starting this video, so we should be good to go. And now we could go over to unify.ui.com and use the site manager. We're now under the site manager and you can see that the Mac Telecom EFG is showing up. So we could go into the controller and we could do all of our configuration. There is one new thing that you might notice. It's the shield icon. It's activate enhance threat updates. We'll go over that in a little while. But first, let's go into our Unify OS. You're probably gonna notice right off the bat under our applications, there's only two applications. This only runs the Unify network as well as Innerspace. We're not gonna be able to run Unify Access, Unify Talk, Unify Connect, or Unify Protect on this. So if you need that, you either need to use a UMVR or you could buy a Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus. Before we take a look at the EFG and the new security improvements, I need to let you know that I will not be doing any type of performance testing in this video on the EFG. It is impossible for me to do as I have very little devices on my network. I will also not be testing out the automatic high availability with shadow mode as I've already made a separate video on that topic. In saying that, I am currently building out a movie editing company that requires resources that the EFG come with and I will be filming it and give you a real world experience video. So watch out for that later in the coming months. And welcome to the EFG dashboard. It looks identical to the other Unify Cloud gateways. We have our WAN at the top, we have our gateway IP, and then it's showing us our system uptime and then some internet activity. We also have our traffic identification, most active clients, most active access points, and Wi-Fi technologies. I don't have any other devices adopted into this controller and we're not gonna do that in this video, but we could take a look at the EFG if we go over to Unify Devices. Now clicking on the EFG, we're gonna see our port manager and then if we scroll down below, we could see our power utilization. This is showing that power supply unit one is using 47 out of 150 watts. I currently don't have power supply two plugged in at the moment. And then we just get all this other information like the model and the IP address. 
let's click over on the port manager. Now on the port manager, you can see port one is my active WAN connection and then port two is my desktop that I'm sitting at. If we click over on port three, this is gonna show us that it's a 10 gig connection. We can see on our link speed. Now, if we click over on port five, this is our 25 gig WAN connection. And you could see that we could configure all of the interfaces and remap them to whatever we'd like. Now let's jump over to what you've all been waiting for. And that is the next AI. And we could see that under our security tab on the right hand side, next AI, and it's showing that it's new. If we click on it, you're gonna see this inspection example. It says intercepts encrypted traffic to analyze its contents for security monitoring or filtering purposes. And then we have a couple different options. Next AI inspection, we could have it off, we could have it simple, or we could have it advanced. Let's start off with looking at the simple next AI inspection. I'll click on simple and then we could see what to inspect. We have this eye icon that if I hover over, it says determines which networks and traffic types are inspected. Traffic is shown in the inspection tab. If we didn't want to do all types of network and traffic, we could do specific. And when we click on it, we could say which network. So all of our networks right now, I only have one configured and then the target traffic type. It says all types, but we could also edit that. The types that we have is HTTPS or web browsing, email pop 3S, we have email IMAPs, and then we have email SMTPS. We also have the ability to inspect domains, so we could specify which domains, or we could choose every single domain. I'm just gonna choose all domains, and we could also add exclusions. So if we do specific, we could do inspection inclusions, but if we do all, it does inspection exclusions. For now, that's all I'm gonna do for this. And then we're gonna have to download a certificate right onto this local machine. There are multiple ways we could install the certificate. First is the manual installation, which I will be doing on this machine. We could do group policy in an active directory environment, for mobile, we could do MDM or mobile device management. Since we're happy with everything that we've configured right now under the next AI, we could press apply changes. There's gonna be this section that pops up that tells you how to install the certificate, which is really nice. And Ubiquity does have these videos to help you out. There's Mac OS, there's Windows, iOS, and then there's Android. We're gonna be doing it on Windows. So I'm gonna download the certificate and then I'm gonna press proceed. With the certificate downloaded, I'm gonna to go to my downloads and double click on it. It says, do you want this file? And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna open it. Next, the certificate pops up and we're gonna to want to install the certificate. We're gonna do it under our current user and I'm gonna press next. Then we're gonna place all certificates in the following store. From the following store, we're gonna press browse. Now we're gonna click on trusted root certification authorities and then we're gonna press okay and then press next. Now that the certificate is installed, we're gonna to wanna to restart this machine. Just a quick note, before installing Next AI, you need to inform your clients that their traffic is no longer private. To make sure you are doing things legally, you may want to consult your lawyer. Now to check out the traffic that's been captured, where we have to go is over to our insights tab. From the insights tab, we need to go over to inspection. And under our inspection, you could see all of this allowed traffic that's already been going through. There is stuff blurred out for obvious reasons, but we could also see the risk on the right hand side. And these risks are low currently, and we don't have any queries as of yet. So if I went into chat GPT or a search engine, we'll be able to see those queries. So let's go over to google.com. Going over to google.com, I'm gonna type in why is Ubiquity Networks the best? Once I press enter, we could go back and we could check out that next AI inspection to see if it picked that up. So we'll go back to the EFG and then we'll go to our query section. Under our query section, we could see two different entries, Mac Telecom Networks, I guess I looked myself up, as well as why is Ubiquity Networks the best? So this was decrypting our Google searches or our chat GPT or Yahoo or whatever search engine that you use. We've now seen the simple next AI inspection. Let's take a look at advanced. It says inspection profile. I'm going to create new. I'm just going to call this one Mac Telecom Networks. And now we need to select our networks that we want to this to apply to. I'm going to do my default. That's all I have. And then the traffic type. The traffic type, we're gonna have all types once again. We have inspected domains, we have inspection inclusions, and then we have these actions. 
I'm going to create a new actions. We have three different things that we could do. We could do queries, we could do block file types, or we could block URLs. Under block file types, we could block out PDFs, we could block out tar files, we could block out PNG files, whatever you want. We're just going to do a query. I'm just going to say block Mac Telecom Networks. We're going to track and block, that's the query control, and it's going to be Mac Telecom Networks again. And then I'm going to add this in. I'm going to press add once more and then once again a third time. Here it's going to tell us to install the certificate so if you were doing this fresh. Once we download the certificate, we could press proceed. Now with the action to track and block, anytime I put in Mac Telecom Networks into a search engine, it's going to block it. So I'm going to go to google.com once again. At google.com, I'm going to type in Mac Telecom Networks. Now a splash page pops up and it says content restricted. The requested content is restricted by Next AI. Contact your admin for more information. We just touched on the very basics of Next AI inspection, but that's going to be it for this video on that topic. The next thing that we're going to look at is the enhanced threat updates. This is an add-on subscription service that will expand the IPS threat signature database. How we go about adding this on, we need to do it through our site manager. So I'll click on the drop down, then we'll go back to site manager. We can see the shield and it says activate enhanced threat updates. I'll click on it and then it's gonna bring up this little pop-up. It said advanced protection with enhanced threat updates. So the one that we pay for it's $75 a month, that is USD. It will be $99 a month Canadian. The amount of signatures we get is 90,000 compared to 20, and then the daily is 30 to 50 compared to five. Two new things that isn't under the standard is a dedicated threat research team producing signatures and then Microsoft Active Protection Program coverage. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna activate this. From here, we could see which site we selected and this is $75 a month USD or 99 a month Canadian. And then we need to select our payment method. In the final step, it says enhanced threat updates activated. Unify is protecting this site from 90,000 plus known threats with daily signature updates. It could take up to one hour for the signatures to update and then we could open our network. Now that we've waited the hour, we could go back to the intrusion prevention and you see that we have this shield icon right beside it. We also see the enhanced threat updates and it is currently active. And if we want to manage our subscription, there is a link right here. Now, if we go down and we look at the detection sensitivity and we click on customize, we now see that there's 52 different toggle switches that we can do. If we go over to something like a UDM Pro and we click on customize, we only have 35. If you put this on high, it's only gonna select 48 out of the 52, but we could scroll down and we could put on hunting, ICMP info, observed info, policy, and then other potential threats. It also shows us a couple different things. We could see when the signature was last updated, which was this morning, and then it says the total signatures, and there's 94,675 as of right now. Also, something new that's coming out with the launch of the EFG is the Unify Enterprise partner program. I'm just going to read this list. It's open to all MSPs and integrators. MSP integrator will work with participating distributors, which is re region based on deals through the program. These are the benefits. We get deal registration for increased profitability and deal security, dedicated pre-sales support and product and sales training. And that's going to be it for my first initial video on the new Unify Enterprise Fortress Gateway. Like I said at the beginning, I will be doing another video that will show real world performance in the coming months. You may be wondering, who is this device for? Well, it's made for large scale deployments that require a large amount of unified devices, clients, and increased security. I know some of you home labbers are probably going to buy it as well. The EFG offers 12.5 gigabit per second routing with IPS on, and I'm really liking the new Next AI. I'm excited to see what other enterprise products that Ubiquity comes out with in the future. If you have any questions about this video, please leave them in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.